Yo, what is up, guys? <clears throat> Zorin here with another Pokemon Scarlet Divided VGC video. <coughs> Man, my throat just decides to die right now. But anyways, guys, today I'm bringing you a team of Pama. Now, before we begin, though, before I continue, uh, my OBS decided to mess up, and so all the audio got lost. So I'm going to have to do a voiceover on my recorded footage just so you guys can see what happened and stuff like that. I explained it in the last video, but in case you guys didn't see that video, I'm going to be doing a voiceover. I usually commentate live when I'm actually in the battles. I usually don't do it um, after, but because of the audio being messed up, I'm going to have to do that. So just, just a fair warning, all the footage is going to be voiced over by me, obviously. But anyways, guys, uh, this is a Sogaleo team with Palma. Uh, this team apparently did really, really well. And I mean, it has Sogaleo and Palma. How can I not want to try this team out? This team was featured by Cybertron VGC, so that's why I wanted to try out the team. It looked really fun. Oh no, this was this was uh, this was the one that James Beck uh, showed actually. Whoops, I'm already confusing who. I think I said oh, man, whatever. I messed up the intro and the other one then. But yeah, James Beck is the one who showcased this team with the Palma and the Sogaleo, and I really wanted to try it out to see how well it can do. Sogaleo here has the weakness policy, and the whole point is that you can get Gouging Fire to bulldoze the Sogaleo to get a um, plus two on the Sogaleo and start just going in. Thanks to full metal body, it won't get the Boldo speed drop, but the enemy will, which will maybe let Sogaleo outspeed the enemy if, you know, if it allows it. We have Palmat here being aggressive as heck with the Choice Scarf. It's not, not being a fake out revival support. Instead, it's going straight for the uh, for the menace mode. And then, the, and then the other thing here is the Rillaboom with the choice band usually you see with fake up but here we're running the choice band set instead and then we have pelipper flutter main here for speed control and white guard shenanigans you know <clears throat> to make sure that those aoe spread moves don't give you too much trouble but with that said guys make sure to like and subscribe you guys like the vgc content and also make sure to look at the description if you guys want to try out the rental i'll put all the info in the description below for you guys and with that said guys i think that's really all i have to say besides yeah i'm just, just gonna be voiceovering like I'm just gonna do a voiceover on the on the on the footage because I do not want to try making more footage. It's 2 a.m. in the morning, guys. I'm tired. Let's just get these uh, footage going out of the way. There is no time for me to be making more footage. So with that said, uh, thank you guys for watching, and let's just get straight into the first battle. Okay, guys. So the first battle, we end up fighting this guy. Oh, I remember this. This guy was super weird with how he played. And I don't remember if I won or lost, but it was a really, really weird battle. I think I lost this one, actually. <laughs> but <laughs> you'll see why. You'll see why I think this is super weird, how he played. Because he did a lot of questionable stuff turn one, and if, if I just went for the obvious play turn one, he would have straight out lost. So I don't know what this guy was thinking, especially when his horse rider isn't even sashed. His horse rider wasn't sashed, and he played the way he did. If it was Sash, I could understand why he wouldn't Terra, and that's what that's where the where the uh, the weirdness comes in. But you'll see what I mean in a little bit. I opt in for ro uh, for for our Rocky Helmet bro over here, Pelipper, and I also opt in for the Rillaboom because my idea here is that they'll most likely. I, I mean, I mean, it's not it's not more like most likely. It's like it was my best play in my opinion. I didn't really have anything else. So I just assumed this was like the best play for me. And in hindsight, turn one, I could have... Honestly, I could have played it much, much more safer. So not only did he play weird, but I also could have played differently. So here we go. We go against Calyrex and Araquanid, right? So the reason why I went for this play, though, was because, you know, when you see Rillaboom, what do you think? That's right, you see Fake Out. But he had NDD in the back, right? I'm over here thinking he has Indeed in the back. I don't wanna. He th there's a there's a high chance it's in the back. I don't wanna deal with that. Let me just um, let me just go for Woodhammer. I mean knockoff on this uh, Calyrex. He doesn't know I have knockoff. He doesn't know that, right? So I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for the knockoff. So here we go. I go for the. He goes for the protect. He just. I, I'm thinking here he's scouting me, right? Because you know he doesn't know I have knockoff. And then I go for the hurricane here. I just go for the straight damage here. I try to get as much damage as possible. Here I was also even debating on going on a Requinid just to kind of just get it get it out of the way. But I decided for the knockoff here 
and then he gets a nice leech life onto me because of that. Which was really, really bad for me because it pretty much healed up the Arachonet all the way back up. But yeah, so here is where the questionable stuff happens for his his side at least, right? Like I should have probably just went straight for the Arachonet here and I really thought about it too and I thought, ah, nah, I need to just surprise Calyrex here with this hit. And then he does, uh, he does this, he does this. I, um, I decide to switch out and just go for a Tailwind, right? I go for a Tailwind. I, I'm over here thinking he's not going to go for Astro Barrage. I have a, I have a freaking Pelipper on the field. Those things literally always carry White Guard. Why wouldn't I go for White Guard now? Now that you protect it, right? That's like obvious. So I just said, that, you know what? I'm going to go into Palm. I just get it out of the way. And he goes for Astro Barrage. But not only did he just go for Astro Barrage when I have White Guard pressure he goes for astro barrage and doesn't terra he doesn't terra so if i went for white guard knockoff he loses his horse here and yeah sure i lose rillaboom but rillaboom being lost here would not have been a problem it would not have been a problem at all like i would have been fine i take his restricted for 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 that like that's really good for me but no he goes he goes and just doesn't terra and i'm so confused why he didn't terra there I can understand going for the Astro Barrage, but the Terra? Like, you're just risking your Calyrex. White Guard would have just stopped it and you would have lost Calyrex. But, oh well, you know what? Whatever. I, I probably should have just doubled into the Iraq when it that was, that was my plan. And now he goes into Indeedee. Which I was like, like why now? Like, you you were so threatened before, but now you're, you're going for this play? It made really no sense how he was playing. Because he was threatened. Like, my lead was actually way better for than, than his, his was. And he just played weird. And, and it put him in a, in a good spot because of that. So we just go for Thundershock here. I was just trying to get, I was at this point, I was just trying to get rid of the Araquanade. I didn't think he was switching anymore. And he has Eject Button on this NDD too, right? But I went for White Guard and he, he, he reveals he has um, Expanding Force here. And I'm just like, oh my God, this guy just has wide moves and stuff. But it's like, why, why are you going for him when you know I have White Guard? Like it doesn't make any sense here. So now, because of Double Shock, I can't use it anymore since I used up all my electricity, which is unfortunate for me since I cannot do anything about it. I honestly don't even know why that 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 restriction is on this on that when this mod is the other one that has it and it's, it's a signature to it. But oh well, I guess Pala too strong otherwise. But you know, I'm over here thinking, okay, well, my Pala is useless. I can't switch out because Riddleboom in the back is kind of like you know in a very bad spot so I can't really do much so I'm just gonna let the palm go because I have no other choice it's okay no other choice here he goes for the shadow ball onto the palm palm goes down sadly he didn't get to do anything which is completely fine I mean like I said he played really weird and I don't know why he would play the way he did so now here I'm just going for some damage onto the calorix just in case it was sashed I still don't know if it was he, in, in this um, point in time, but then I learned that he is because I, I get a knock. Oh, no, I mean, he's not sashed. I learned he's Cobra Cloak <laughs> in the end. So that's why I was wondering why didn't he, like, why would you, like, risk it all here? It, like, made no sense. But here we go. We go into our Soga Leo here. And I'm just here thinking he's going to probably. He's either gonna switch out or he's gonna he's gonna go for a protect here with his Calyrex, right? This that that's pretty obvious here. Doesn't want his Calyrex going down. And I'm just gonna go for white guard because I need to go for the white guard. And then I just go for the Sunsail Strike on the Flutterman. I'm not playing games. He's he does have a rock and it in the back, but at least I need to just get something done here at this point, right? I have to get something done here. And I have to do something. And I do have Tailwind up, so So Galio is indeed faster than the um I think it was because I remember I was getting I was a little bit frustrated because I'm actually not faster with Rillaboom I believe under Tailwind so that was kind of annoying but either way he switches out into Flut he switches out Fluttermane into his Araquanid to take out the Sunseal Strike since it's water it resists it and he's pr he's confused so this is this was really nice for me because he actually oh no this wasn't the turn never mind he does protect though like I predicted so that was fine. And then I go for White Guard just in case he doesn't go for it, though. I kind of had to, just in case. I, if I lose my Soga Leo, then, you know, it's kind of over. But it's okay. Not a big deal. I'm going to reckon it. 
do some damage to the Raccoonit, and then we just go ahead and um, I think I switch out here. My I switch I switch out someone. I think it was Sogaleo because I, I remember getting Rillaboom in and knocking off the the Cover Cloak. So I remember I do that. At least I think I did. Was this not the battle? Oh yeah, he goes for Terra Blast. That's what happened. Yeah, he goes for Terra Blast, gets the KO, and then I don't have White Guard anymore, right? But I also take his Calyrex here. Okay, this wasn't the battle. There was another one that had, I think, Cover Cloak. Am I am I tripping? Which I swear I remember this thing had Cover Cloak. There's one of them that. There's one Shadow Ray. I think it might be the next battle. <laughs> I don't I don't remember. Guys, it's 2 a.m. I'm tired, okay? I can't remember everything anymore. Like, it, it, it's my, I'm Boomer as well. I'm like, I'm, I'm freaking getting old. My brain doesn't work. I have a medical condition. Listen, I, just, I'm, I'm a mess. I'm a mess, right? It's 2 a.m. Please, please, guys, please forgive me. Anyways, back to that. He, I, I take out his horse. And I go back into Rillaboom here. And now here... Here's the fun part, because I know he has, um, I know he still has the bro in the back, right? Saz and Diddy in the back. And I just decide, you know, I'm going to Terra Liquidation just in case, because I don't want to take a hit. And he switches out Indidi on the Flutter main slot, which is perfect for me, because that means I'm getting a double KO here. Because I'm Choice Banded Woodhammer, that should still KO this Iraq when it, no, no shot it doesn't. With, when you're able to, when you have a wood hammer, um, with a choice ban. If it, if I was in choice ban, this probably wouldn't KO. But I was choice ban, so I was kind of confident that this should KO even if he swapped out. And then if he didn't swap out, then at least I take away his uh, fluttermane, which is still would have been okay for me. So I take away his uh, entity here. Entity is gone. We get a second crit. I'm over here telling Sogalia to chill because they don't even matter. These these crits actually don't matter at all. But Sogaleo is not having it. He's just going to critical hit everything he sees. He's not having it. He just wants to deal with it. And then we get a Raccoon it down. And then it's just Fluttermane. Now, remember, he still has Terra. And I was kind of terrified because he could he could have still won. Due to the fact that he still had Terra and he probably could just... I already Terra Water. Because I Terra Water, he could go for a Dazzling Team and they'll be neutral, right? Sorry, I had to yawn. Like I told you, it's 2 a.m., guys. I, I wish I wish my recording just went through. Oh well, who cares? Uh, he goes to Terra Fairy, and he goes for a dazzling gleam here to try to get a double knockout. Thankfully, our Sogaleo is a boss and decides, you know what? I'm staying alive for you, brother. At 27 HP, and I'm going to take out this Fluttermane. And we could have lost if it was Sash, but it wasn't Sash, so we were we were completely fine with that. And we just take it out. I still don't remember if it was Choice Specs or not. But if it was Choice Specs, that damage was small. For for Sogaleo to be able to take that hit. That's kind of crazy. But either way, we take the win. And that was the win against Jonathan. So yeah, we, we did end up winning. But he did kind of play weird. So at least I think he did. Either way, let's get straight into the next match. Alright guys, here is the next match against Ignasi. Now... This one was rough. I will tell you this right now. This one. Oh, we're going to be in for a long one. And I'm tired, guys. Dang, the, dang my OBS did me dirty. Because this one was a long one, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, there was a lot of things I could have done differently in this one. And there was also a mess up, which is why. Oh, no. I ended up winning this one. I mean, it's still, it, was still, it was still a long one, but we ended up winning this one through a little bit of luck and... No, it was a lot of luck, actually. But it's a very, very long one. We're, like, we're, we're, we're in for a long one, but I ended up messing up somewhere where... Oh my god, man. I just couldn't think. I was, I was overthinking things. I was overthinking things, and we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. Just waiting for it to, to start. But yeah, Terrapagos is scary, and something I learned is Raging Bolt is scary in this team. I swear to God it is because of the Terra Water. So trying to Terra Water um, in front of a Raging Bolt kind of always scares me. 
which in hindsight it shouldn't. And there's a lot of things I could have done in this one specific turn that would have made this a lot easier for me. So okay, we're up against um, Raging Bolt and Incineroar here. Of course, our our bro over here does not care about the Intimidate. And he actually doesn't opt for the Fake Out, which was kind of huge for me here. Because here I decide, you know what? I need to take out Incineroar. I'm just going to go for the Close Combat on the Incineroar and I'm going to Bulldoze. Because what this does is that at least, yeah, I might lose my Raging Bolt here. I mean, my... my, my my Gouging Fury to a Draco Meteor, but at least we get the plus two on the on the dude, which would be really really good on our Sogaleo. And we also take out Incineroar, because there's no way they're not they, they know I have close combat on this on this Sogaleo, right? There's just no way they're gonna go for it. So I go for it, and he actually protects, which is really really big for me. Because that means there's no damage coming into me. So I go for the Boltos here to activate the weakness policy on the Sogaleo and you know the speed drops are always cool but they're not needed in this in this case because we're already faster against both mods. I'm pretty sure Sogaleo is faster than Raging Bolt as well. But either way we get the plus two and then we just go straight for the close combat and one shot it into the into another dimension right and get rid of it great it's going super well for me so far right I think yeah this is fantastic for me so far Okay, so this is where things get tricky. This is where things will get tricky because of what the, what's coming in next, which is their Air Shifu. Not Water Shifu though, Dark Shifu. So Dark Shifu comes in and this is where I started like, not panic. Well, okay, it's kind of like panicking. Because I'm wondering, uh, do I do I Water Terra? Because then I'll be, I'll be weak to Raging Bolt right after. And that's no fun, right? I don't, I don't know what to do. And then as I'm thinking about what to do here, I'm wondering, oh, wait, Urshifu might be sashed, so what do I do? Like, do I do I just go for it? And now remember, I'm at minus one defense, right? So I'm over here thinking, you know what, Sucker Punch could probably one-shot me. It probably does, it just probably one-shots me. So that's what I was fearing here was the Sucker Punch, not really the Wicked Blow, because if I, if I go for the, um, for the play that I should have gone, I would be fine, but I kind of played this wrong. As you can see, I, I timed out, meaning that Sogaleo is going to just go down here for free, where I shouldn't have to have gone for free. Because what I should have done here is I should have just bulldozed and close combat anyways, the Urshifu, or even Sunsail Strike. Either one would I No, I think I should have definitely gone for, for a close combat. Because a close combat would have definitely destroyed this Urshifu, even if it goes... I think, I think I actually do survive a Sucker Punch. And I'm not sure if I do, but I think I could have. And I should have just taken the chance because I lose my Sogaleo here for no reason. I shouldn't have lost it. And this is why I said it, it gets a little bit tougher. Now we get out the Palm out here because at this point I'm just like, I need to thread in these guys, right? I need to thread them somehow. And so I go for the um, the close combat here onto the Ur Ur um the Yershifu and I just go for I think I, I go for a Howl here which the reason I went for Howl here is I, I, I assumed maybe with Speed Booster Gouging Fire outspeeds the the Palma and it's like a like a um whatchamacallit I was thinking it was like a speed tune thing but it wasn't I was wrong I was dead 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 wrong in that in that scenario so I went for Howl and this wasn't really very helpful and in hindsight, I probably should have just stayed in with Palma, but I was scared of the of the um, of the Star Storm coming in. I knew it wasn't gonna come in that turn, but I was terrified of it coming out the next turn. Uh, Earth Power, I don't think I would have went down to it even at plus one. Maybe I, I probably would have. Who knows? But yeah, I losing Zogaleo made this a lot harder, and I kind of wish I just went for Bulldoze. Um, I don't know actually thinking about it no I, even Boltos wouldn't have worked out I think I had to go for Heat Crash there because if I hit myself then I'm, I'm losing health too right so then Sucker Punch definitely just KOs me and that wouldn't have been good oh, I probably was self-KO'd myself so never mind that wouldn't have worked out at all so I go for Boltos here to try to break the Terra Shell 
and I do break it, but it doesn't do any damage, so it, it had leftovers, so it just goes back to full HP. So I basically didn't do anything. But yeah, we're 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 now. This is where it just starts to get really really bad because it just just start calm minding, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know a way to stop it without Palmot now because Palmot is literally the key to winning this game now. At least that's what I was thinking because Palma deals with the turtle and Electro Furia doesn't really deal with it too well. Like it would have to Draco Meter to deal with it. So that was kind of my plan. So I go for the Terra Grass here because I know they're going to Thunderclap me. There's no reason not to. Not thinking, well, maybe I should just uh, Hurricane here. So I go for the Hurricane here, actually. I, I was thinking of White Guard because they might Terra and just go for it. And try to, and, and, and try to like, fish out a... Um, a double KO here, but I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go for the Hurricane, get as much damage as I can into it, and then maybe Palma could just come in and clean it up. That was kind of my plan here, so that's what I go for, <laughs> that's what I do. And from here on, it's just me bulldozing and trying my hardest to deal with these two because these two are basically a menace, an absolute menace against my team right now. So we go Terra Grass just so the Thunderclap just doesn't clap me from, from from there. I don't have Sash, so I have to go for this play. And then I go for a, another Boldo since yeah, Heat Crush is not gonna do anything thanks to the rain, right? I'm not gonna be able to touch touch any of these with with it now. But speaking of Heat Crash, oh, that's a little foreshadowing because of what happens in the end here. But yeah, we just go for bulldozers just because it's like the only thing I can do to it. And I'm just going for Hurricane just to get some damage off. And I get a Confusion <laughs> now. This is where the, the luck starts coming in to play. Because he gets confused. And then he hits himself. He hits himself. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that's good. Alright. That's one hit. But the damage isn't enough, obviously. Because he's, he's, a, he's a special attacker. So it's not going to be doing a lot. But here I decide, you know what, I'm just going to... I'm gonna go for and switch out into into Weather Ball because it should be more damage. And then I go for the Bulldoze as well, again. And then that's when he Terra's, right? And me forgetting that Terra, and I swear to god, it's been three months and I still forget this thing takes away our, our terrain and our, our weathers. And he takes away my, my rain, which, you know, kinda sucks because now Weather Ball doesn't do any damage, right? Because it's now a normal move, it doesn't do any damage. It's not stab anymore, right? But we're slowly chipping down this <laughs> this raging ball. We've just been slowly chipping it down, slowly going there, and we go for a weather ball and do like negative damage to it. We tickle it. We just say hello. We tickle you today, and we tickle it. <laughs> That's it. We tickle it, and he hits himself again. Thanks to the confusion, like I tell you, we get a lot of luck, and the luck is really why we won. Because he goes for another calm mine, and I'm just terrified here. I'm literally just terrified because what what am I supposed to do now, right? It's a miracle if I win this right now, but I I don't give up. Obviously, you never know; things can happen. You can still you can still come in, you can still clutch a win, and we go ahead and just keep going for Baldos. <laughs> really our only play it's just going for boulders over and over and over again because we do not know when this thing is going to get a terra star, star storm off i can't bring our boy out we cannot bring it out without worried about a draco meter hitting us because it's a plus two or a um earth power hitting us or a star storm so we kind of just have to hope they just ko something so we can bring it in and then I have to play the 50-50 mind game because Terrapagos can just protect knowing that close combat is coming. And then he gets their star storm through, but white guard. So we're still alive, we're still kicking it, we're still in 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 here, we're still in here, and our our bonds are miraculously still alive. Because he goes for a thunderbolt here and leaves me at one HP. Uh which Begs the question now that I think I, I didn't think of this in the, uh, in the battle because I was just so so focused on trying to win. That means it's protect, calm mind, thunderbolt, thunderclap. It has no dragon moves, which in hindsight 
now that I think of it, I would have won this much easier if I if I if I knew that. And the reason why, like, well, if if I just paid attention to that, because the reason why is because I was scared of Draco meteors. Thunderbolt, I could probably take one with Palmot, right? I do switch in Palmot now, hoping that he 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 goes for like um a, like something like another star, star storm, knowing that I um like maybe thinking that I'll greed. But he does go for the Thunderclap because I was at one HP. That's why I swapped out, and he just got confused, right? So this is where I mean, like, if I paid attention in this, in that precision which I just now realized because I'm like talking over it. He had no dragon move, so I had nothing to fear with this dang long neck son of a gun. I could have just gone and close combat the Serapagos and I would have been completely fine. I would have been absolutely fine here. And I would have just instantly won, but I went for the Raging Bolt because I was just like, I'm just gonna go for Raging Bolt here. He's the one with priority. He can Draco Meteor me. I'm, I'm hoping he protects with the turtle. He does not protect with the turtle because that's why I went for Raging Bolt was because I thought he was protecting. And I go for another Hurricane here. Just to chip it down a little bit more. And he finally snaps out. And he goes for the Earth's Power onto the Chapamon and KOZ. So I'm over here thinking, God, okay, I just lost it now. Not for sure lost. I really thought he was going to protect. I mean, a close combat from Palma. Like, I know Palma isn't, isn't like around, but that thing still has like base 120, 130 attack. That thing can still hurt. And it has close combat. Stab close combat. That thing will probably murder you just because it's a it's a funny little squirrel, a chipmunk Pikachu looking thing. It's not doesn't mean it's not gonna do damage. Even Pikachu does damage, so I would fear it. But either way, we lose the uh, we lose the Palmet. I'm just here thinking, what the heck do I do now, right? I have to go for the for for the hurricanes because hurricanes are my best play because I can get confusions. And really, that's really my best play. So he goes for protect. And I'm here taking Y, and then I realize, yeah, he just goes for lefties, of course, that makes sense. Of course he's going to go for the lefties here, right? It makes perfect sense why you why you would go for that. So he protects himself, and then what, the, what happens here? I think he goes for Earth Power, but he goes for it on the Pelipper for some reason. He goes, he, he for some, this is, this, this is kind of a throw for him, because I'm just here thinking, okay, well, I have to go for Hurricanes, I have to hit him. I have to hope that the that, that Pelipper just keeps hitting these Hurricanes, right? It's like it's my only option at this point. So I'm over here just going for Hurricanes. He crashes now. He cra I, I go into Heat Crack because I don't want to damage my, my Pelipper anymore. And Heat Crash should be my more, more damaging move here. And I'm like super close to like taking it out, right? And I'm over here. Oh, well, here comes Earth Power. Here, here's Sia. And no, he goes for the Pelipper. He just flat out go for the Pelipper there. Now here is where I end up winning, and I do win this one after a long, long battle. And like I said, with some luck, I because I, I definitely won because of luck. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. I did play a, a, at least the final turn well because I knew he was going to protect for the lefty recovery, because it makes sense. You want the lefty recovery. I probably don't KO now. Once once the lefty recovery happens, Hurricane might miss. There's a big chance I miss this time. So I go for the Howl, just in case he goes for the Star Storm. I also white guard, and then, I, and then thanks to that howl, I'm able to pick up the KO on this Terrapagos. I didn't even need the Pelipper at that point. I just needed the heat, the heat crash to go off. So heat crash goes off into the Terrapagos, and I end up winning the game. It was honestly very insane how I won. So much luck was involved, and I definitely could have played it better, especially not knowing that Reggie Bolt only had two electric moves. I could have definitely brought in Palma more safely and played Palma way better but with that said we still won so GG to Ignasi alright guys here is the final match now this is the one that had the cover cloak on the on the horse rider it wasn't the other one the other one I just took out I completely I told you I, it's because I ran two I ran into two horse riders but I I played this one really bad in my opinion and I could have played it better and I could have definitely won because I, I do lose this one which is completely fine like this team is really really good Palma did really well looking back at the at the footage and honestly that's all I could ask for as Palma did do work and if I just played a little bit better I could have made Palma just destroy these teams Palma could have definitely destroyed these teams if I just played it better but I did not 
and that is okay. Um, it, the team is really well made, and that's what matters. So here I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to go into our Funny Ghost and our Pelican because we have White Guard and Fluttermane can threaten like a lot of that team. It can't be picked out by any of them and it has Sash so it's pretty safe to just go into it maybe force a Terra on the, on the horse if it decides to come out so that's why I wanted to go and opted for this lead. And it was a really good lead into his team as well. Like what what he brought, he brought in Raging Bolt and Amoongus. And this is why I say that I should have played this a lot better. Because knowing full well that he probably wouldn't let me have his Amoongus for free. There was either a Protect happening or a... It was a Protect or a Terra, right? That is its only two options. And I'm over here thinking Raging Bolt probably will attack just because it wants to like... It, I mean, why is it fearing the Moonblast? I mean, it could fear the Moonblast because of the... It, it could be Joy Specs for all he knows. So I'm over here thinking, you know what, I'm just a Shadow Ball and I'm gonna Hurricane. Maybe that just takes it out. And in hindsight, I should have just swapped Pelipper out into the Rillaboom. Because if he Terra's Water, then now Rillaboom threatens him and he kind of has like... He's kind of pinned. Kind of has to like either protect or like dip, and then I should have protected on the flutter main because if I protect on the flutter main, at least he can't spore. So now he can't spore either side, and I would have been fine. But I opted for the Terra Grass and try to just take it out because I really wanted the Mungus out. But like I said, looking back, I should have went for the Rillaboom, and I would have been in such a good spot here. I would have been in a phenomenal spot. He would have had to switch. He doesn't know I'm I'm, I'm choice banded. I could have. Um, pretended I was going to fake out his, his his dude so it would force him into another protect or he would just switch out one or the other it would have it would have worked out much better so he does protect his his um, his raging bolt thinking I was going to go moon blast for it and I go for shadow ball does a decent chunk but it's not enough to pick up the KO onto this uh, among us which was really really upsetting because now my Fluttermane is pretty much useless. It doesn't do anything now for the rest of the game. It's just put to sleep. Which is why I said I should have protected. Wait, do I have protect? Yeah, I do have protect on it, right? It's Icy Wind, Moon Blast, Shadow Ball, Protect, yeah. So yeah, I should have protected and I should have went into Riddle Boom. That was, that was the, the mistake where pretty much probably cost me the game, honestly. If I just went for the Riddle Boom, I would have been completely fine. So I switch out the Fluttermane because, I mean, there's no point anymore. We might as well just switch out. And I go into my Riddaboom here. And now I have two grass types and he does switch into Amoongus because I predicted he was switching into into most likely into his Grim into his spooky horse guy. That's why I swapped out. Because I figured he would for the regenerator, of course you're gonna want to regenerate your health on the the mushroom. So I opt for Tailwind and this is the one where I was like, what? I'm not faster because I went for Tailwind expecting me to be faster. So this this was mistake number two, right? I thought I would be faster now that I'm under Tailwind. That's why I kind of gave up my, my, my Pelipper thinking, okay, well, I'm under Tailwind. We should be fine now. I was completely dead wrong. I was actually slower than the, um, <laughs> than the horse. Even under Tailwind, my, my Rillaboom was slower which was really upsetting because I really really needed the um, the the Rillaboom to be faster so that way I could have preserved my Sash but sadly yeah he um, doesn't Terra because he doesn't think I have um, he doesn't think I have any um, any way of hitting him he thinks I'm probably going for Fake Out or something on the, on the Rillaboom slot and yeah, he's faster. So I was just like, oh god dang it, he's faster. I, I, I don't think Grassy Grassy Clyde would take the KO, that's why. So I just wanted to set, ensure the KO on this thing. So I go, get the knockoff, and it's gone. He doesn't tear out. He doesn't know I have knockoff, so that makes sense why he didn't tear. Oh, well, he, it's not that he doesn't know, it's because he was already Water Terror on the Mushroom, right? And he was Cover Cloak on this one. This one was Cover Cloak. I don't know what the other one was, but it wasn't Sash. Uh, it could have been Sash. I don't know. That one I have no clue if it was Sash. 
but this one was cover cloak i guess for the speed control so my, my plan of icy wind would have not worked <laughs> it would have worked well for him so that's that's something to think about but yeah from here on i kind of made so many mistakes already and it's pretty much really difficult for for me to to get back he played he played well honestly he did he really did play well i i definitely could have played this way better and it's okay that's that's what happens when you're uh a Rilla Boomer in real life. A Rilla Boomer, if you would like to say that. Get it? I'm a Rilla Boomer. Yeah, that's pretty much what I am. I'm a Rilla Boomer. I'm a monkey. And I'm a Boomer. Because I'm, uh, I'm dumb. But yeah, so sadly our funny little ghost doesn't wake up either. So we just have to toss it out and let it go down. Which is really, really unfortunate. I do switch out into Sogaleo because I was I was locked into lo into knockoff and I didn't want to be knock um, locked into it. And this is where another mistake happens, which is I swear I made mistake after mistake in this in this video. Which like he gets he gets two crits by the way as well, so I was getting punished as well for for this. Not only did I not wake up, he gets a, a crit. Which was really, really unfortunate, but well, not really unfortunate here. But he gets another one later. He gets one on the uh, on the on on the Soga Leo, which puts me into range of what happens after. And it really, really sucked that it happened. So, but it, here, here's mistake number three, where I should have thought about. I go for close combat. I mean, I go for psychic fangs, and then I go f for wood hammer. Now, this was a mistake because I should have just went for Grassy Glide. Grassy Glide would definitely KO it with Choice Band. And it's Water Terra. So I don't know why I went for Woodhammer here. It made no sense for me to be going for Woodhammer. I mean, yeah. I should have just went for the uh, for the Grassy Glide. That was really silly of me for, for going for this. Because Grassy Glide would have just KO'd it. And then I would have gotten some damage onto, these, onto the Raging Bolt. And that might have maybe mattered, but I don't think it would have mattered because his Urshifu was in the back, and he had um, he has Aqua Jet, and neither one of these mons is fast enough to deal with that, because you know Tailwind is gone. There's no point. It's not gonna matter. But like I said, he crits me here, which did matter a bit because um, I think with that crit, um. I, I definitely if I, if I went for Grassy Glide instead, I think I might have been able to win. Maybe but it's 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 a big stretch. I don't think Aqua Jet KOs Rillaboom. That's why. And Sogaleo wouldn't be in range of an Aqua Jet, and I might have been able to win. Maybe it's it's a big maybe though. It's a very very big maybe. But I would have been closer. So the throw was in the Grassy Glide. I could have still won. Very very unlikely, but. Because of the crit, that definitely sealed the game. And that's pretty much what happens. Lots of misplays on my end. I could have played this so much better. But it's, you know, it's it's what happens. And it's, it's a good learning experience. And it's good to kind of like know where you went wrong. And where you could improve. But with that said, let's just get straight into the outro here now. Thank, thank God, I'm, my mouth is tired. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I had to do it like this because, I, like I said, the OBS audio had to mess up. But if you guys enjoyed this type of commentary instead of me just doing live commentary, let me know. Maybe I could do videos like these sometimes in the future. But with that said, guys, I'm tired. It's, it's almost 3 a.m. It's almost 3 a.m. I can't believe this thing kept me up till 3 a.m. I was, I was so happy to just edit my videos and get out of here. Because I was so tired. Like, don't get me wrong. I love making videos for you guys. I really do it. That's why I'm doing this. Like, I was I was so ready to just be mad and have to redo all the footage. But I was like, you know what? Let's just do a voiceover. The footage was really good. And I kind of want to, like, keep it. So let's just do a voiceover. Put on some background music. And just talk about the team. And talk about the, the plays and stuff, right? I decided to just do that. But anyway, guys, the, the rental will be in the description below alongside the Poke Paste and the info, any other info that I'm going to put in of the creator. Thank you, guys, thank you again, James Beck, for showcasing the team. And yeah, with that said, like and subscribe. And also support my second channel. I do have a second channel that I'm going to be posting TFT content on. So if you guys like TFT, make sure to subscribe to my second channel. I always have it in the description below. Please do. It helps me out. Anyways, guys, thank you guys again for, for 
supporting me and watching my content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.